thing I never really did was talk that much about Sned, and I have given some facts about him in past videos and stuff like that, but I haven't really ever discussed him, really. And one thing I certainly haven't done is analyzed him. So, in dishonor of all the Michael Jackson haters who love this man, and think that he's so great, and everything about him was just lied and manipulated, well, let's get a proper analysis of the way he speaks and see just how genuine of a person he truly is. I'm just going to look up a simple video called the Tom Snedden interview. It's basically the interview that he did after Michael was found innocent. Prosecutor Tom Snedden, yesterday, the day his office suffered a crushing defeat at the hands of Michael Jackson's jury. Well, tonight, he's talking about what happened to MSNBC's own Rita Cosby. Rita joins us now in Scarborough country. Rita. Joe, Tom Snedden. Whoa, there's a Scarborough here in Toronto. He was quite fiery during this interview, and for the first time we hear how the boy who accused Michael Jackson of molestation reacted to the verdict. We at MSNBC, in order to protect the boy's privacy, have chosen to remove his name, so you may at times not hear... Oh, fuck his privacy. His name is Gavin Arvizo. Gavin Arvizo. Make sure it's loud and clear the audio for a brief second during the interview but what you will hear is a boisterous prosecutor who defends his case through and through first i asked the district attorney if he was personally devastated by the jury's decision we felt that we did the best job that we could and uh, and that's it i mean uh, uh that's my that's our philosophy you know you, you do the best you can and uh with whatever money you get and any moral corruption in your way we're not the judge and we're not the jury. We're the, we're the people... Even though you tried to falsify evidence and pay them. ...who put on the case and we feel that we did a, a, a very good job. Well, better than a good job, an excellent job. Did you talk... Yeah. Are you referring to the last 10 years or just 2005? ...to the boy. Uh, what was his reaction? He's so nervous. He knows he's lying. It was uh, very discouraged. He was, uh, as you would expect, a young 15-year-old boy who everybody in the world now knows the jury didn't believe what he said, was very discouraged. He uh, couldn't understand it um, and was uh, down. And I talked to him at length and told him to get his chin up, that he was a very courageous young man. He's lying. I can just tell by the way he's talking right there. That conversation didn't happen. None of them were distraught or stressed. Like, you're lying right through your teeth. That he had done the right thing, and, you know, that's the whole thing about this, is, you know, we did the right thing for the right reason, he did too. Stop looking over to your right. And it didn't go our way, but, you know, life goes on. Didn't go our way. I love that. That's the word choice. It's not like you're saying it didn't go the correct way. It didn't. It didn't go the morally correct way. It didn't go your way, the way you wanted it. Word choice is everything, buddy. And, and his life will go on, and it will be a very good life. He's a very courageous young man. What did he say to you specifically? Of course, it'll be a good life because you really, because you coached a fucking liar. Usually, if somebody was molested and then ended up losing their case. Um, you would hope they'd have a good life, but I mean, it's hard to think in that sense. You just know it's going to happen because look at the man you coached. He asked me a couple of times, you know, what, you know, what happened? Why didn't they? Why didn't they believe me? Why didn't you know? And I, you know, I tried to explain to him that uh, uh, I can't. I, but I, uh, I tried to. Well, what did I say again? I need to make it up. I couldn't. I couldn't tell him that. But of course, you couldn't tell him that because there's nothing to say. In our opinion, in our opinion, 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 not evidence or facts. You believe in him and that I told him that basically this is a chapter of your life that's closed, close it up and get on. And close it up and get on. I know that you were fucking molested and you lost a huge case and almost the entire world hates you, but move on. It's not a big deal. Totally not a big deal at all. If somebody was actually molested and you really cared for them, I assure you, you wouldn't have them, you wouldn't be saying it as simple as, eh, move on, close it like a chapter, close the book, go ahead, see you tomorrow. Your life, uh, go back to school, play your sports, and, uh, and, uh, and be a 
be a good person, be somebody, and he will, because that's, he's that kind of person. Is there any doubt in your mind after talking to this boy uh, that Michael Jackson did not molest him? There never has been from the very first time I met him. Well, of course not. You've had this vendetta since 1993. So you believe that Michael Jackson molested this boy, even to this day? Well, Rita, it's so simple. Uh... <laughs> you see, did you, did you like how after she asked him a second time, which means that her question has a lot more force to it, there's no way that he could lie by that point. So he didn't just simply say yes or no. He goes into this explanation because he really didn't have much of a choice. Not only do I believe that, but all the people associated with this case who's had an opportunity to be with... Not only do I believe that, so he did say it at the end, kind of, but then he goes, all the people involved with the case, bullshit. By, invo by all the people involved with the case, you, re you are referring to the California District Office. That's it. You're not, oh, oh, and your girlfriend, Diane Diamond, you're not referring to people like Aphrodite who changed their opinion while they were there, or William Wagner, or a legion of other people. We interact with, uh, th this is not Tom Snedden. This decision to go forward in this case. It is Tom Snedden. The whole decision was Tom Snedden. It was nobody but Tom, it was only Tom Snedden. It was a decision that was made by a team of, of people uh, the entire, all the officers who really wanted Michael Jackson in jail. A number of lawyers beyond myself, and there isn't a person involved in that. A number of lawyers beyond myself. Now, when you say beyond, do you mean more, or do you mean of a higher level than you? Because as much of a cunt you are, you're actually a very high level somehow. And I just want to point out for the, I think it's like the sixth time I've said this. Keep in mind that even before the MJ trial, Tom Snedden had falsified evidence in other trials too. This is actually documented. So, if you think he's a good guy, you can hate Michael all you want and think he's a good guy for what he did on that front, but you can't, there's no excuse for the other trials that he doctored. Decision that in any way, shape, or form has ever wavered in their belief that was was telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, you're an ugly fucking cunt. Look at those just miserable fucking eyes and uh. I believe that to this day. Of course. The jury though, another team, you know, eight women, four men, said no way. They said the evidence wasn't there. That, that's what they said, and I, and I don't quarrel with juries. But you're asking me what my belief is, and my belief is uh, has not wavered, and it will not waver ever in, in that regard. And that's what He's so nervous. The, his eyes, his head, the shrugs. Oh my god, he's like so anxious and nervous because he's afraid that she's going to ask him good questions and he's already asked a couple and he can he can see that she's getting fired up. Like, let's do this shit. We have juries. And having prosecutors make those decisions. Is it possible? And now he's laughing. And it's a nervous laugh. Fantastic. Although, well, sir, that this boy and this mother uh, who have lied before in other cases, like the J.C. Penny case, totally fooled you guys, and they were lying again. No, and then that's a misrepresentation of what happened in J.C. Penny's. <laughs> it's a documented case with actual facts, and that's a misrepresentation. So let me get this straight: the J.C. Penny was a misrepresentation, but the Michael Jackson trial wasn't. Okay, and again, you're being anxious and nervously laughing and hesitating with all your answers. And then when you, and then when she brings up that Janet alive before, you're just like, oh, yeah, that's right. But it, it was misrepresented. <laughs> How so? Because even it sounds like she had exaggerated some things before. Don't cut her off because you don't want her to finish her question. Well, all right. Exaggerating is not the same thing as being a liar. Exaggerating is not the same thing as being a liar. Despite the fact that is actually true, she didn't just exaggerate, buddy. Not by a long shot. And uh, what a mother does and says is different from what a child says or does. And you were asking me specifically about... And I don't think that... Uh... You were asking me about, about Gavin. Let's not talk about his mother, Janet, because if we talk about his mother, 
you're going to end up being right, and that's not fair to my case, because I am a prosecutor who should have retired ten years ago, and I am a complete fucking asshole. And you were asking me specifically about, and I don't think that uh, if the mother had even done something wrong, that you visit the sins of the mother on the son. Sure you do, when the mother's involved in the fucking case, and what was said, and why the entire thing came down to begin with, and why the son was with. Michael and why you are with Michael and why you travel to Brazil with a two-way ticket and why you're in, and why you um have a have a history of fraud with J.C. Penny and other people as well and you were at this trial and you covered your head and you lied, you absolutely are involved. If you have real belief and uh, integrity of what the what the young child was telling you, so I think that you know this this tendency to kind of uh, mesh these things together as if one's dependent on the other, I think is a they're totally dependent on the other, like. In fact, these two assholes are more dependent on each other than any case in existence. Probably a, a fallacy which a lot of people have bought into. Oh, because it's, because it's documented on fucking court transcripts that you try to fucking remove and change? Yeah, but you know what, Snedden, shut the fuck up. You know, those two were more intertwined in this case than a fucking murder case with an accomplice, for Christ's sakes. Perhaps even the jury, but like I said, I'm not. I'm not quibbling with the jury's verdict. I'm just. You're asking me my personal opinion, and I'm. I'm telling you that uh, there isn't a person associated with the prosecution in this case that that has ever wavered in their belief. Well, of course, that's why they were fucking prosecuting it. And what do you say to people who say that you personally had a personal vendetta against Michael Jackson? You were driven by it. That you spent all this taxpayer money, hundreds, you know, of search warrants. Just, just so you know, when she's talking about all the things he did, having a personal vendetta, wasting taxpayers' money, he is smiling, laughing, and looking up. What a great, honest guy. Mm -hmm. uh, tons of time, and it was a waste of taxpayers' money, because the jury sort of laughed it off. Rita, first of all, there were a hundred search warrants in this case. Second of all... Keep smiling while you say that. It makes you seem so much more believable. Oh, we didn't spend a ton of money. Yes, you did. And third of all, that whole idea of the revenge is such nonsense. I say that you folks in the media that really believe that garbage, come down here and check my life. See what I've been doing the last ten years. Oh, please, just because you did other stuff, like have ten kids with a bunch of fucking... With your stupid, horrible wife. I'm sorry, that was a cheap shot. Okay, let me let me rephrase. Just because you've had 10 kids the past 20, 15 years doesn't mean you don't have a personal fucking vendetta and you didn't dedicate your entire life to this shit. If you really wanted to go on doing different things and you wouldn't even have, you wouldn't even have taken the second case after you lost the first one. Like, if you wanted to do other things with your life and leave Michael behind, why even take the second trial to begin with? And by the way, I need to applaud you just saying that you didn't have a personal vendetta because you know what I find hilarious? There's actually an anti-Michael Jackson documentary and one of the guys in the documentary who hates Michael because it's an anti-Michael documentary was talking about the supposed Snedden vendetta thing and he literally said, and I quote, people think that it's bad that Snedden had a personal vendetta against Michael. Did he have a vendetta? Of course he had a vendetta against Michael because he wanted him, you know, in jail for the truth. I'm, of course, paraphrasing, but basically the guy said, yes, Snedden did have a vendetta, but he put it as a way against, like, in a good way, you know, not a vendetta like, oh, I'm an asshole, but, like, Michael deserves to be in jail, I'm gonna put him in jail. Regardless, the guy said that Snedden did have a vendetta, and now Snedden's saying he doesn't. Man, you can't even keep your own lies intact. You know, I, I have a family, I have a large family, I have great... Yes, you do have a large family. And kids, I play sports, I work in the... Yeah, you look like it. ...community, I volunteer my time. Bull fuck. If you think I have given this one passing thought once that case ended in 1993 and 94, you're, 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 just, you're not in touch with reality. What? You didn't give it any passing thought since 93 and 94. That's why you did interviews in like 96, 95. That's why you took this tr this case again and wasted all your time falsifying evidence, going to Australia looking for boys to fucking accuse them. Yeah, yeah. You haven't given it one thought. I, mean, I had a chance to make uh, cost probably a million dollars writing a book on that case. Actually, it's a proven fact that authors and journalists really don't make that much money. So the whole theory about, oh, I could have written a book and made a whole bunch of money, and the reason why Gavin hasn't written a book is because he's telling the truth. You know what? The honest-to-God truth is they don't make that much.
They really don't. If you could, if you could have made a million dollars writing a book, you would have. Will you ever write a book? Go on. Will you ever write a book in that? I chances. I probably not. And I'm stuck. Probably not. But I mean, I. Probably not. And he's again. He sounds nervous. He's like hesitating with his questions, and he's all like, "Well, you may, well, no, and yeah, well, no, well, no, but I don't know. Well, I don't. I don't get much money. I mean, it's not right. Gavin, no. I had a chance back then to do that. I had a chance to go on TV. I had a chance to be interviewed. I have. You were interviewed. Never said one word after that press conference. Oh fuck. Ever in ten years. Liar. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's. Go ahead. It's the truth. I mean, just look at it. It's the truth. I, I never, people would, every time he would do something, they would call me for a con, from a comment everywhere. Japan, uh, France, England, New York, everywhere. The media would go crazy, and I didn't take any of those calls. I never, Keep being defensive. I never made a comment about anything. I, I really, really, really was not involved in... Really? Seriously? Truly. I'm really telling the truth. Following Michael Jackson's life, when, when, when said he was not going to co cooperate with our investigation, that was all with, and I moved on. And that's, that's the truth. I, don't think, I know that doesn't make it nice for you folks because it doesn't sell, but that's the truth. Mm-hmm. And being defensive while saying it. There is word tonight that Jackson and his team, I guess, uh, have indicated that they want you to immediately surrender these photos uh, that were taken, uh, that you have access to, of Michael Jackson's private parts, that they are fearful that they're going to be leaked out in the press somehow. Will you surrender those photos? Arita, that's just another instance where the defense team doesn't know what they're talking about. I don't have those photos. The sheriff's department doesn't have those photos. Yes, they do. What the fuck are you talking about? Nobody can get those photos without a court order. There are only three names on the signature to get in there, and you need signatures from two of them and a court, a judge's approval. So this is just typical of what's been going on in this case ever since it's happened. The people don't know what they're talking about, and it's not true. So what do you think of Michael Jackson's team who are saying, we're worried that Tom Zenn can leak this out? It's just it's, it's the same old nonsense. I can't leak out what I can't get to, can I? So you can guarantee I don't have one negative statement. What did I just tell you? They can't get... <laughs> what a nice guy. He's so fucking rude. Oh my god. If you want those pictures, you can fucking get them, you goddamn liar. And they're in the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Office, and you fucking know that I had to be. You can go see them whenever you want. And you were laughing and smiling and smirking the whole time you were answering that damn question. Access to it without a judge's approval. Oh. So they're not going anywhere. That's, what that's what I said. That's what I've been saying, and that's the truth. Now, if you saw. That's what I've been saying, and that's what I'm saying. It's the, the, the truth. That's what you have these things for. If you saw Michael Jackson uh, on the street, you ran into him, or run into him again, <laughs> what would you say then? That's a highly unlikely scenario. But if it were to happen, I mean, what would you say to him if you could see it? Is it? Yeah. He's so happy about that question. Oh my god. I would say it. I'd, I'd probably nod and keep walking. <sighs> would you walk away? I, I said I'd probably nod and keep walking. I wouldn't go out of my way to avoid him. I, I, don't, feel, I don't feel any vindictiveness towards this man. Bullshit. In a lot of respects, he's a... He's a fairly pathetic person in, in the sense of what he's gone through. And uh, I don't have any vendetta against him. Uh, I don't have any vendetta against him. No feelings, no hatred, but I'll insult him and call him pathetic for absolutely no reason. It's just that simple. Are you sad, sir, as your term is ending? Um, that this is no, maybe the last, well, no, this may be the last, you know, huge case. You're certainly never going to have a case like this with a year and a half left in your term. Are you sad this is the way you're going down? No, because I managed to completely destroy a man, even if he wasn't found guilty. I did a good job. I, 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 I just don't think you people understand who I am. And who I am is that, that, that I tell the, the, the kids that I've coached, and I tell Mike... <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> did you hear what he said? 
<laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I know what he meant, but he literally said, the kids that I've coached. Man, you really shouldn't have let that slip. Oh, God. If you do the best job that you can possibly do, and you do it for the right reasons, whether you win or whether you lose is unimportant. The question is, can you walk off the field at the end of the game with your chin up and say, I gave it my all, and I played fair and square, I did the right thing. That is a very good lesson, but it's too bad you don't follow it. You must be religious, aren't you? If you've done that, you've got nothing to apologize for, nothing to put your head down about. And I'm proud of the, my office, I'm proud of the people who participate, I'm proud of the Sheriff's Department, and if anybody thinks that because we lost this case that I'm going to walk around in a sackcloth with my chin down around my knees, it's crazy, because I'm not. Mm, our thanks to the District Attorney. By the way, Ben is a well-known figure in Santa Barbara. He's a father of nine kids. He became the oh, nine kids. The county in which I'm so glad you're dead.